All dance shares rhythm. And together they danced. And oh my goodness, they danced on Saturday. Pulling the tradition up through the years, pulling at the threads with every beat to their feet. Joining together with musicians, word ramblers, ribbons, bells, hankies, gigantic puppet heads, of which more later. And all of us in this short time, five or six days, with one mission in mind that we share to hold hands in tradition and make something new. So it's hey for the girls, ho for the boys, and it's hail for the ale we share. And we'll leap as we reap our revels all round this rollicking English fair. Morris's a dance is really pure because it's not at all narrative, it's purely a dance expression of of dance itself really. It's moving and it's got a rhythm and it's got a life and it's got a, a structure and a shape and a kind of yeah, a way, a flow. I want to kind of stretch what's possible and explore and experiment and play and I want the opportunity to work with with musicians, with with, with devs, the storyteller, with with Ben and Kate and the people who've come in to mentor us and work with us. And I, I want to share the opportunities I've had through working in other arts fields with the dancers and say, look what this guy can offer us, you know, look what we can offer him back. So a lot of it's about sharing and collaboration and setting up a programme that could do that. The sky swollen with the promise of sunrise. A town begins to yawn its Saturday into wakefulness. Through the sky the birds race and chase the carts and trucks hauling canvas and wood and painted cloth dipping in and out of the guffing puffs of diesel fumes. What Laurel asked me to do was to come in and watch what was happening in the rehearsal period and see if I could find and trace some kind of narrative thread not necessarily to tell a story uh, you know, with a, with a neat end but to find the story in what was happening. The big theme that came out was fairground, the idea of the fair, and the fair being a meeting place and a gathering of people where things happen, including Morris Dance. And so I just started to think about, you know, um, England as a fair, or the folk tradition as a fair, as a gathering. narrative and the shape has very much come from the dance, you know, Morris, because it's just a pure dance form, it's got this beautiful flow to it, so there's a lot of, you know, it makes its own, own flow, and then you just need to fit a narrative around that flow, the flow's already there. You know, but my concern all the time is that's the great, there's a lot of ideas that have come up, and like, that's really interesting to a Morris dancer, but how does that fit in terms of flow of a show, how, how is that item different to this one we've already done, where we were all doing the same thing at the same time? You know, and you know, Morris is we all do the same thing at the same time and there's lots of symmetry and it's like sometimes you need to break that symmetry to appreciate the symmetry, you know, the idea of tension and release is there in Morris but it's not something that Morris dancers think about because it's just there in the structure of the dance. So it, this kind of setup enables us to think about the tension and the release and how we play with that. Where, where is the movement in, in words and where is the music in words and where are the words in dance? There's a visual aspect to words, there's a musical aspect to words. So just that, for me, suggests that there's huge potential to extend and stretch my use of the, of the language beyond what I think I can do. Simply by dint of being in a room with somebody who's absolutely steeped in music or absolutely steeped in dance. Oh my heart, it's frozen to my head. My feet they are like a lump of lead. My shoes they are frozen to my feet from standing at your window. Oh, yes. figure of the dance. So there's, the speech is a part of Morris, the calls are part of it. But what if those calls are more than just one word? It's common to have a song at the start of a Morris dance, so why not have it during or after or around or in? And just, just don't play. 
my initial role here is um, as a singer, um, and that's you know my background, and that's that's what I do for a living. Is I, I, I sing and I sing a lot of unaccompanied traditional songs, um, as well as some accompanied stuff. So I've been coming in from that angle, but then that's already started to shift in that the, we've been using um, song as a direct accompaniment for dance rather than, than instrumental stuff. Um, and then taking some of the lyrical themes from the songs and building those into the spoken word pieces that, that Debs has been, been putting together. So there's, there's kind of a cross fertilization going on all the time of um, the songs feed the, the dancing and the, the ideas from the dance go into the spoken word. And we've, we've actually written some song material that features in the show we've, we've written it in the last four days in response to socializing and and the experience that we've had you know putting different teams together different traditions in in, in you know quite an intensive environment we put those different things together over a short period of time um, and you know those, those have inspired new pieces of um, traditional feeling material um, so there's a whole cycle going on in, in just in a few days of, of those different strands interesting journey of picking songs because we need a song at that point in the show kind of setting a mood or a tone we gave Jackie early on in the show a pastoral space we gave get the gav later on a quite kind of dark kind of a gritty story place and actually Jackie's song has ended up setting the journey in terms of narrative we've we kind of got this thread of a fair a fair or a fate or a festival or a you know, the characters you might encounter in a fairground. The creative process that you go through yourself, or that I go through, is one of hacking through thicket, you know, thick forest, and I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going to end up. I just have to trust that I'm going to end up somewhere. And when you work with other artists, the same thing happens, only faster, and there are loads more... Um, I suppose uh, tributaries to that to that path that you can go down, and it happens much much faster because you're with somebody else. And the route that you might take through that forest, you know, you could be dragged off at 90 degrees, and that's that can be quite challenging. But you find things that you would never have found. And I just think the process uh, at its best is fast, it flows like a river when you're with somebody else. And you're kind of paddling through mud when you're on your own. <laughs> it's, it's a strangely collaborative process. You know, it's really immediate, and you're you're responding to the dancer, and the, the dancer's responding to you. So, it's a, you know, I don't know how to explain. It's kind of chicken and egg. There's no real separateness between the the musician or the singer in this case and and the people dancing. When when we put it together tomorrow, that's really going to be that's going to be the moment of collaboration, actually because there's no time to collaborate in the way that we'd all like to, I think, at the moment, because it's just so, you know, we have to get this, this thing up and running. So everyone's off in their corners doing their thing. And actually, in a way, Thursday, although it's a performance and a show, that's the real moment of collaboration, because it all comes together and hopefully will affect each other and will allow each other to affect each other, if you know what I mean. That's what I'm hoping. It's only when you start to talk about it that you realise how much... It has all cross-fed. I haven't really sat down yet and just thought, oh yeah, we we did that, and then that mean that happened, and then this happened, and. <laughs> and there's your answer. <laughs>